Hi and welcome to another video analysis with the dead ball area and rugby dump coaching. This week we're going to take a look at Saracen's much fabled defence to try and get an idea of how it functions and the key elements behind it. The Saracens have had an excellent season, landing the double in both Europe and the Aviva Premiership, so we're going to look at their win over Exeter in the Premiership final. Now, early in the game we've got a couple of excellent examples of how aggressive Saracen's defensive system is, but something I think that is key to this system is excellent individual decision making and their understanding of positive and negative outcomes. Now first let's focus on decision making in defence. Now we often talk about decision making in rugby, and the majority of the time it's referring to attacking with the ball in hand or tactical guidance, but it's equally important in good defence. And if we go back to the beginning of this first clip, we can see that Exeter get on the front foot, and on the next phase we can see why Saracens place so much stock in excellent decision making. If we count the numbers, we can see that Exeter have the advantage over Saracens, with one, two, three, four, five players in shot, and then another three who will come into shot as we move the video on. And that means Exeter have created a numbers imbalance of eight to six. But that's further compounded as Will Fraser and Billy Vinopola's spacing is quite tight, covering the transition zone. And this means they aren't able to impact on these wider channels defensively, effectively making it nine against four defenders. Now because Exeter have three players in this channel, Steenson, Ewers and Null, Makovinopola and Barrett have to hold to shut down those options and because of this, we can see Slade is in a perfect position to exploit this by sliding behind Ewers to attack Taylor's channel, with the aim of committing him and creating a huge overlap in Ashland's channel. But if we look at Taylor, he already knows if X is to get around that corner, then he and Ashland are isolated and outnumbered. So he now has a decision to make. He can back off, tread water and jockey on the ball, trying to force Slade to pass. And this will allow him to drift out and support Ashton, essentially pushing the ball towards the touchline. Or he can shoot out the line and try and hit Slade man and ball. Cut out that overlap by closing off this corner and pushing the ball back to the bigger defenders inside him. So he decides to shoot out of the line and Slade not wanting to risk the pass steps inside. Now there are a couple of things that will impact his decision making. The first is knowing that if he shoots out of the line, Barrett and Vunapolo will step across and fill the gap in behind him. Then there's also the fact that drifting will concede ground and because of the numbers it's likely Exeter will gain ground and recycle. Okay, they may not score on this attack, but defenders will be drawn across the pitch. And when X to reload, there's a good chance the Saracens' defence will be thinned out further. So he shoots, covers the ground, shuts down Slade, who steps inside and gets tackled by Barrett. Now here's where the positive-negative outcome factors come into it. Taylor doesn't make the tackle, so statistically that is a missed tackle. But by shooting out, he stops Slade moving the ball wide and exploiting the overlap and drives him back towards the inside defenders. The end result is a net gain for Saracens of about 10 metres. So this is in fact a positive outcome from a missed tackle. The four steps to backwards and eventually they have surrendered possession because as we can see, Saracens regroup and again get off the line with Ashton flying up, getting into Nell's line of sight and shutting down the pass. When the ball is recycled, Exeter kick back to the box. Now in this clip, although not as pronounced, we again see Taylor shoot out of the line to shut down that wide pass from short behind. So Witten carries into contact and Saracens get a quick defensive set and faced with a full field, Slade goes to the air and Saracens regain possession. Now let's fast forward 20 minutes and we again see X to run the screen pass option in midfield. But Saracens react very differently here. And again, Taylor's decision making is key. This time X to have the overlap, but are well spaced in the outside channels. And that means even though Saracens are very narrow, they can shut the space down as the ball is transferred wide. So Taylor comes off the gas early and Saracens readjust and start to jockey backwards and sideways, allowing X to transfer the ball wide until eventually Saracens have the numbers meaning they are able to shut down the attack and then make enough of a nuisance of themselves at the breakdown that Exeter can't secure a quick ball and end up going into touch. Now there are two key points here. Unlike the last example, even though by jockeying backwards they can see ground, it allows Saracens defence to zone in and isolate Woodburn. As we can see, there are plenty of Saracens players at the breakdown. The second is once one person makes the defensive decision, the whole team reacts and adjusts, seeing it through. And we see this also with the blitz defence, where you hear Saracens urging each other to get off the line. The trust is a huge part of all of this. And as we can see here, it's an incredibly simple defensive system utilising the exact same skills teams right through the ranks will be familiar with. It's just the quality and decisiveness of the decision making by the Saracen players, coupled with the trust in their teammates, that make this executed superbly under pressure. Now in the next video we'll look at Saracen's exit strategies and broken field defence, looking at how the decision making again impacts on these elements of the defensive game. Thanks for watching and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube.